Okay, hello everyone. Can we start now? Yes, sir. Hello. Yeah. I think many people are still joining in. Yeah, let them come. I'll just set everything by then. <clears throat> Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, Ashutosh. Can you see the screen now? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. <clears throat> so, guys, today we are uh, going to finish the transition elements DNF block. Okay, little bit we have discussed already, but we'll start from the beginning. We'll go a bit quick, and then we'll start with uh, aromatic chemistry also. Okay. So, aromatic chemistry, there is not much. We have to discuss about the uh, carbenes, uh, intermediate, and then the reactions based on that. Okay, rimer diamond -time reaction and all. And there are various reactions in uh, carboxylic acid and ester reaction that we have done already. That is also uh, based on this. That also we'll discuss once. Okay. So few reactions we have already done, and like I said, carbenes plus aromatic chemistry. So aromatic chemistry, we'll discuss about the substitution reactions on benzene ring. So all those things comes under aromatic chemistry and carbenes. Okay. So we'll do that in uh, that particular topic. We are starting with. Transition elements, D and F block elements. After that, we'll start aromatic chemistry. Probably we won't be able to do the entire uh, aromatic chemistry today. So by next class, we'll, we'll, we'll be able to finish the uh, portions. Okay. So heading right down, transition elements or D and F block elements. <clears throat> Okay. Transition elements lies from which group? It starts from group three, right? And it goes still from group three to group twelve, right? In between. S block and P block. Okay, so D and F block elements 
lies between S block and P block. Okay. So this here we have the transition elements. Okay. So the first two group is S block. 13th P block start from group 13. So here we have from 3 to 12. This is the first thing. All the elements you don't have to memorize, but the elements of third period you you must keep in mind scandium titanium vanadium and all okay scandium titanium uh, good afternoon um, everyone scandium titanium vanadium chromium zinc copper all these elements you must remember okay the position uh, atomic number and all it's important right so <clears throat> the first kind of question they ask from here is related with the general electronic configuration okay general electronic configuration general electronic configuration so we have different different elements different different series also we have the first thing here you see the general electronic configuration for D block elements is N minus one D one to ten NS zero one or two NS zero one or two. Okay, this is the general electronic configuration we have. Okay, you have to remember that which elements has no NS electrons. So for that, I'll write down one by one here. You copy it down. They have asked question on this ones. Okay, so the 3D series, the elements belongs to where, where the you know electron goes to 3D orbital. We call it as all those elements. We call it as 3D series, or we also call it as first transition series both are same thing 3d series or first transition series okay for these elements like scandium titanium and all the electronic configuration for these elements we have argon then 3d 1 to 10 4s 1 and 2 4s orbital is not empty here you see there's no zero electrons possible for this similarly the 4d series or we also call it as second transition series second transition series the electronic configuration for this is krypton then 4D, 1 to 10, 5S, 0, 1, or 2. 5S, 0, 1, or 2. Here, the question that they have asked here, that for which elements the 5D, 5S orbital has zero electrons, okay? So write down for this one. For palladium, the atomic number is 46, and it has zero electron in 5s orbital the electronic configuration is krypton 4d10 and 5s0 this question they have asked once in the exam which element has zero electrons present in 5s orbital okay the next one is the third transition series transition series which we also call it as 5d series and for this the electronic configuration we have xenon xe 4f 0 to 14 5d 1 to 10 
and 6s can have one or two electrons okay now in this the first element for that the electronic configuration is important okay the first element is is lanthanum l a lanthanum so electronic configuration for lanthanum which is 57 is the atomic number the electronic configuration is xenon 5d1 6s2 right here the 4f orbital has zero electron and it is possible only for lanthanum only for lanthanum okay 4f orbital has zero electron so these three two three uh, electronic configuration you must remember this question like i said palladium question they have asked in the exam so don't forget it okay that's the one thing okay after this we have fourth transition series also which is 60 series okay in which the electron goes into 60 orbitals okay and that is not much important okay now the electronic configuration we have discussed okay there are few exceptions in electron in this electronic configuration for example for chromium and copper you know right it has completely filled uh, half filled orbital d orbital and completely filled d orbital chromium and copper electronic configuration you know already okay reason also you know what is the reason for that we have discussed many times electronic configuration that half filled and fully filled orbital gain some extra energy okay so that's one important thing here just a second so then we'll finish this portion and then we'll start aromatic chemistry okay, okay. Now, now what are transition elements? Okay, the definition of transition element again on this also they have asked question on this. Okay, so the transition elements are those elements which has incompletely filled d orbital. Okay, so there is a confusion in this that d block elements and transition elements are same but it is not same d block elements are all the elements which is there in d block but transition elements are only those elements which has incompletely filled d orbital so write down the next line transition elements are those elements write down like this just a second this way write down transition elements are the elements of d block which has which has incompletely filled which has incomplete d orbital incomplete d orbitals okay so d10 configuration wherever we have those elements are not considered as transition elements okay so for example you see For example, you write down zinc, cadmium, Zn, Cd, and Hg are not regarded as regarded as transition elements. Transition elements. Because 
when you see the configuration of zinc zn the configuration is what it is argon 4s2 3d 10 okay cadmium you see the same uh, group actually cadmium is the electronic the atomic number is 48 for cadmium and it has krypton 5s2 4d 10 and hg the electronic sorry the atomic number is 80 xenon 6s2 5d 10 okay now in all these examples you see the d orbital has completely filled d orbital you see here 3d 10 4d 10 5d 10 hence these are not transition elements this is one difference we have in transition and d block elements so we can say all sorry we can say all transition elements are d block elements but vice versa is not true got it right yes, now sir. we'll see the general characteristics of these elements general characteristics the first one the first one you write down metallic nature the first one is metallic nature okay all transition elements write down on trans all transition elements are metals all transition elements are metals and they exhibit most of the properties of metals they exhibit most of the properties of metals next line next line write down it contains both metallic and covalent bonding it contains both metallic and covalent bonding next line greater the number of unpaired electrons greater the number of unpaired electrons in d orbital greater the number of covalent bond greater the number of covalent bond example write down chromium molybdenum and tungsten are very hard metals are very hard metals and why they are hard because maximum number of unpaired d electrons okay maximum number of unpaired d electrons and hence they can show maximum covalent bonding maximum covalent bond maximum covalent bond they forms hence their strength is high and they are very hard metals correct this example you must remember another point you write down the second one is atomic radius atomic radius okay now in atomic radius there is there is no regular train into this okay because of uh, you know the weak shielding effect of d and f orbital and uh, 
and the electronic repulsion also. So both factor we have to consider. Right on in 3D series, the atomic radius gradually decreases. Radius here. Radius decreases just a second. Radius decreases radius decreases from scandium to manganese scandium to manganese in 3d series i am talking about 3d series here scandium to manganese then almost same from radius is almost same from iron to nickel and then for the last two element the atomic radius increases from copper to zinc okay the reason is same effective nuclear charge and the electronic repulsion in the first case from scandium to manganese the effective nuclear charge is dominating here z effective is dominating that's why size decreases here the z effective and the electronic repulsion is almost same electronic repulsion is almost same and hence the size also becomes equal for the last two the electronic repulsion dominates the z effective and hence the size increases a second this order we have also discussed in uh, periodic properties last year if you remember right so a screening effect we have discussed that is nothing but the z effective okay vertical row if you go from top to bottom In vertical row, from top to bottom, we know as we go down the group, atomic radius increases. Okay, in this only, we have a concept of lanthanide contraction this is important lanthanide contraction okay write down in this lanthanide contraction write down to this Right on. Due to presence of 4f orbital, due to presence of 4f orbital, which must be filled due to presence of 4f orbital, which must be filled before the 5d series of elements. before the 5d series elements 
the atomic radius the atomic radius decreases the atomic radius decreases from the expected value from the expected value as the 4f orbital shows weak shielding effect weak shielding effect okay weak shielding effect okay this is observed elements cerium atomic number 58 to lutetium lu atomic number 71 okay this from cerium to lutetium the size decreases this phenomenon is known as lanthanide contraction the decrease in size because of weak shielding effect of f orbital okay because of lanthanide contraction what happens the following pair of elements this point you write down they have asked this question in the exam because of lanthanide contraction the following pair of elements has almost same size following pair of elements has almost same size they have asked this question in the exam why zirconium and hafnium shows has similar size okay almost same size same reason we have for molybdenum and tungsten also okay almost identical in size this one the question they have asked zirconium and hafnium the reason is lanthanide contraction okay now the next one third property we have is ionization energy we know the definition of ionization energy it is the energy to remove an from the outermost shell of an isolated gaseous atom okay isolated gaseous atom now you see in this one again like atomic size like atomic size it also shows irregular trend okay so it has irregular trend for example you see the elements has scandium titanium vanadium chromium magnesium iron cobalt nickel copper and zinc atomic radius order we have already seen and according to that we know the size decreases from scandium to magnesium okay so when the size decreases so tendency to remove the outermost electron is also less the ion increases and since we are talking about the ionization energy of the 
uh, ionization energy. So first electron we are talking about. So it is first ionization energy, IE1. We know iron to nickel, the size is almost same. Okay, so size same, it means they have also have same ionization energy. IE1 is also same. Copper to zinc, the size increases, hence ionization energy decreases. Okay, size, sorry, increases, ionization energy decreases. As size increases, we can easily remove the outermost electron, hence ionization energy decreases. Okay, it's important to understand the trend of ionization energy in a vertical column. Okay, so in vertical column, ionization energy here decreases from first to second member member from first to second member ionization energy decreases the reason we already know size increases okay but the ionization energy but the ionization energy of third member is more is more than the second member the second member and reason behind this is what the reason behind this is lanthanide contraction okay in third element third uh, like member we have lanthanide contraction lanthanide contraction and because of that size decreases ionization energy increases for group three elements group third this question also they have asked in the exam the order of ionization energy is maximum for scandium, then yttrium, and then lanthanum. This order you must remember, it is very important. For the elements of group three. Sir, but that's the same order, the Sorry? one, two, three. what so you said ionization energy of third member is greater than second member right yes but for group three it's the same order yeah is we have a reason for this according to that uh the scandium see the first element is scandium right then yttrium and then lanthanum okay so here what happens the atomic radius for these uh elements are almost same if you're talking about third and second member okay second and third member the atomic radius is almost same because when you go down the group c i'm talking about this i'll write down here i'm talking about second to third member now okay so atomic radius is almost same right because the electron is going into the higher um, uh, shell but at the same time we have lanthanide contraction so elements of second and third period will have almost same size atomic radius, but the atomic number differs by what? 32. We all, we know here that the third elements, the third member of this group will have 32 more proton, correct? So since the third element has more proton, right? that's why the order is this so reason is size is almost same so that is not the factor of ionization energy 
okay ionization energy tendency to, to lose electron lanthanum has 32 more protons than yttrium right that's why it is a bit difficult to remove electron from lanthanum order will be this for third group for third sorry for third yeah for third group so it is an exception we have here it is an exception in all other groups what happens we are going fourth group so left to right also we are shifting fifth group left to right we are shifting so in that way the size also decreases if you compare right so because of all these things size number of protons the observed ionization energy for group 3 is scandium yttrium lanthanum the order is this i'll give you one general trend here okay like i said there is usually when you consider what the atomic size as you go down the group only you consider atomic size then what should be the ionization energy as you go down the group atomic size increases so ionization energy should decrease if you are considering only atomic size but that is not the only factor here here we have two three more factors like i said lanthanide contraction shielding effect okay electronic repulsion many factors are there so all these factors collectively give you a fixed order of ionization energy for various groups so in general i hope you will understand this now if i explain you this point just give me 2 minutes niranjan if you see this here all those factors that i told you if you consider those factors the order of ionization energy is given for group 3 elements in general what we say the third 3d series elements will have maximum ionization energy then 4d and then 5d which is nothing but scandium yttrium and lanthanum okay but if the elements belongs to these groups 4 5 6 and 10 if the elements belongs to these group the observed rate observed order of ionization energy it is observed for 5d to be maximum then 4d and then 3d it is just reversed okay but if the element belongs to this group group 7 8 9 11 12 so for these one the elements of 5d series again we have maximum ionization energy then we have 3d and then we have 4d so based on all those factors which is you know theoretically it is very difficult to explain those okay but the observed order is this and that is the collective uh, you know effect of all those effects got it so what you have to keep in mind you have to keep these orders in mind for various groups it is very important because you know it is a irregular trend we have so they ask this question in the exam je and any other neat any other regional exams also they ask this questions got it yes sir yes yes sir understood sir yeah yes sir got it sir yeah the first ionization energy the first ionize one more order you write down here first write down this ie3 just a second ie3 the third ionization energy write down ie3 for manganese is very high this question also they have asked ie3 for manganese is very high because can you tell me the reason anyone why manganese has very high ionization third ionization energy anyone 
So because it'll have when four s two electrons will be removed, then it'll have a, a, a partially filled, half filled uh, d d orbital. Half exactly half filled three yeah. D configuration. Correct. So that is the reason. Write down for manganese, the third ionization energy is very high because electron removes from the very stable half filled configuration. Very stable half filled configuration. Okay. One last thing you write down for I E one. I E one. The 5D series elements belongs to 5D series will have higher first ionization energy than 3D, and it is even higher in case of 4D elements also. So for IE one, the order is this. Okay, this is actually the conclusion of these two. Okay, this order we can write except for group three. So group three is uh, has exceptional order. That's why this order they have asked many time in the exam. This order, scandium, yttrium, and latinum. Got it. Okay. Next one, write down melting point and boiling point. Melting point and boiling point. Write down quickly. Due to presence of unpaired d electrons. Due to presence of unpaired d electrons. The elements has tendency to form covalent bond, and hence they have high melting and boiling point. Can you repeat? See, basically, one point you have to keep in mind: more unpaired electron, more will be the tendency to form covalent bond. More covalent bond. More melting and boiling point. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. So if they ask you which one of these elements has shows more has more melting or boiling point, you have to count the number of unpaired electrons. Okay, because more number of unpaired electron, more will be the covalent bond. More covalent bond, more melting and boiling point. Okay. Now, can you tell me the trend of melting point and boiling point? Left to right, if you go, what is the trend of melting point and boiling point? Sir, uh, does it it increases up till manganese? And then and then it decreases. Thomas said. Very good. So as you go left to right, first the number of unpaired electron is increasing, and after that the pairing starts. So number of unpaired electron again decreases. So the melting point and boiling point first increases. With increase in atomic number, write down. There is one exception into this. Okay, the first one. Write down the exception. Manganese has manganese has five and. Unpaired manganese has five unpaired d electrons, but it exceptionally show lower melting point. But it exceptionally show lower melting point. Then that of vanadium and cobalt. Then that of vanadium and cobalt. This is because of the complex structure of manganese.
This one you must remember. Complex structure of manganese has five electron, but lower melting and boiling point than vanadium and copper. Tungsten. This question they have asked many times in the exam. Tungsten has highest melting point, three four one zero degrees Celsius. Tungsten has highest melting point, three four one zero degrees Celsius. Next. Next, write down. A reduction potential, standard reduction potential. Sir, did you say tungsten has highest melting point? Yes. Sir, could you repeat the previous exception? Exception, I said tungsten. The you wrote third electron, but it has lower melting and boiling point than vanadium and cobalt. That one, can you repeat? Yeah, manganese has. Five unpaired electrons, unpaired d electrons, but it, it exceptionally show lower melting point than vanadium and cobalt. This is because of its complex structure of manganese. This is because of the complex structure of manganese. Okay. Next, write down standard reduction potential. Standard reduction potential. Standard reduction potential actually in solution, right? Down in, in solution, electrode potential depends upon depends upon the following factors. The first one is the enthalpy of sublimation. Enthalpy of sublimation, conversion of solid to gas. The second one is ionization enthalpy. Ionization enthalpy, and the third one is hydration enthalpy. Hydration enthalpy. Hydration enthalpy will be defined when the solvent is what? When the solvent is water. If there is any other solvent, we write here solvation enthalpy. Enthalpy of solvation. Okay, the general term is solvation, hydration we use when water we are using. Just a second. Okay, now you see what is the total energy change for standard reduction potential? What is the total energy change? First of all, you have a metal solid, right? It converts into gas. Okay, and for this, we require the enthalpy of sublimation. Now, this gaseous metal it loses one electron to forms an ion. And for this, we required ionization energy one. And then with this gaseous ion, when put into water, H2O, it forms M plus aqueous, which is the hydration energy, that is delta H of hydration. So total energy change, delta H total, is equal to the sum of all three. 
delta h of sublimation plus delta h of hydration. Okay, so actually in solution the standard reduction potential depends upon sublimation, ionization energy and hydration, these three things, okay. If smaller the value of delta H total for a particular ion, greater will be the stability of the oxidation state, okay. For any metal ion, like suppose M plus, okay, if Delta H total is small, is small, then this oxidation state, the metal, the oxidation state of this metal is stable. Means, suppose one metal can form two, three oxidation state, the oxidation state which gives minimum delta H total is the stable oxidation state for that particular metal. Write down this point smaller the value of delta H total, smaller the value of delta H total for a particular oxidation state in aqueous medium, in aqueous medium, greater will be the stability of oxidation state. So electrode potential is what? The electrode potential measures, measures all these energy, okay? It includes the calculation of sublimation energy, ionization energy, delta H of hydration, okay? So write down the electrode potential. Measures all these energy total energy change basically we are considering. Enthalpy, ionization energy, and hydration energy. Okay, that is the electrode potential. Now, the one point into this, lower the reduction potential, lower the uh, reduction potential, means what more negative standard reduction potential negative standard reduction potential more negative standard reduction potential more will be the more will be the stability of ion we can write or oxidation state, whatever oxidation state we have. It is actually the same thing, electrochemical series. We have done in electrode uh, chemistry. Remember that? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So two points are important here. You write down because on this you'll get theoretical questions. Okay. The metals which has positive reduction potential value, the metals which has positive reduction potential value can displace hydrogen can displace, this point is important, can displace hydrogen from dilute acids.
copper has negative reduction next line copper has negative reduction potential and hence it cannot displace hydrogen one question you'll get on this in coming cet exam so can you repeat ha huh? what copper can you repeat negative reduction potential so can you repeat the last copper part? has negative reduction potential huh. and hence cannot displace hydrogen from dilute acids yeah next point chromium has high negative reduction potential chromium has high negative reduction potential and it is unreactive and it is unreactive due to due to the formation of due to the formation of its oxide layer on its surface this is also this question they have asked many times why chromium is unreactive due to the formation of oxide layer cr2o3 it forms formation of its oxide layer on its surface okay next one catalytic properties catalytic properties write down next see we know many d block elements can act as a catalyst in various reaction for example platinum platinum act as a catalyst for the manufacturing of what of h2so4 what is the name of that method formation contact, of h2so4 contact process contact process fe we know is a catalyst in haber's process Haber's process. MnO2 also behaves as a catalyst when we prepare oxygen from the decomposition of decomposition of KClO3. KClO3. Ni also behaves as a catalyst in hydrogenation of oil. this question they have asked many times platinum also they have asked many times in the exam okay next write down oxidation state it is also important oxidation state just a second we have discussed this one color formation is there and then we have Okay. 
Yeah. Right down oxidation state. Transition element. Transition element with exceptions of few transition elements with exceptions of few shows large number of oxidation state shows large number of oxidation state and why various oxidation state is shows because it has incomplete d orbital okay incomplete d orbital and we know ns orbitals also take part in the reaction so that's why both ns and n minus 1 d orbital the number of electron present into that because of that only it shows variable oxidation state okay so the highest oxidation state i'll give you a small formula here highest oxidation state for 3d series highest oxidation state for 3d series is n plus 2 n plus 2 where n is the number of unpaired electron n is the number of unpaired electron n plus 2 is the highest oxidation state for 3d series and this is not applicable for chromium and copper write down this not applicable for chromium and copper In 3D series, manganese shows maximum oxidation state of that is important. One note next to write down. In general, The minimum oxidation state is shown by a transition metal. Minimum oxidation state is shown by a transition metal is equals to the number of ns electron the electron present in s orbital is equal to the number of ns electrons but in this also we have one exception according to this logic scandium the minimum oxidation state should be what scandium the minimum oxidation state should be 2 because it has two electrons in ns orbital but in general it shows plus three oxidation state minimum oxidation state for scandium is plus three 4d series this question they have asked many times 4d series the highest oxidation state is plus eight shown by ruthenium are you ruthenium and for 5d series the highest oxidation state we have again it is plus 8 shown by osmium write down next as oxidation state increases As oxidation state increases, the tendency to form 
covalent bond also increases. So, could you repeat? As oxidation state increases, the tendency to form covalent bond also increases. So, what is it for 5D series? Sorry? What is it for 5D series? 5D series, I have tell, told you, no? Osmium has maximum oxidation state, plus 8. Yes, yes, osmium. Osmium. Osmium wala question, they have asked many times in the exam. And overall, in, uh, the, in the priority table, the maximum oxidation state shown by any element is plus 8. That is osmium for 5D series and ruthenium in 4D series. Okay, one more very important comparison we have here. Light on next line. Relative stability of various oxidation state. Relative stability of various oxidation state. Stability of various oxidation state can be explained on the basis of on the basis of the stability of stability of d0 sorry d0 d5 or d10 configuration okay for example can you tell me which one is more stable here titanium 4 plus ti 3 plus mn plus 2 mn plus 3 fe plus 3 and fe plus 2 tell me which ion is more stable? Uh, Ti3 plus and... Ti3 plus, Mn2 plus and... Uh... Ti3 uh, plus, Mn2 plus and... Fe3 plus. Can you tell me the configuration of Ti4 plus, Ti3 plus? Why Ti3 plus? It should be Ti4 plus, right? Ti4 plus, Ti4 plus, plus, plus. global plus. gas. Configuration of Ti3 plus, if you draw, it is 3D0 and 4S0. Yes, Omkar. This is 3D1 and 4S0. Oh, yes. yes. Hence, this one is more stable, D0 configuration. Here, Mn plus 2, the configuration is what? 3D5, 4S0. 3D5. And this is 3D4, 4S0. So again, D5 configuration is more stable. Order will be this. Fe3 plus. Again, Fe3 plus has 3D5 configuration. 4S0, FET plus, FE2 plus, we have 3D6 configuration. 4S0, D5 is more stable. This is the order. Okay. Magnetic properties, you know. Paramagnetic and diamagnetic. Write down magnetic properties. Paramagnetic, diamagnetic. Paramagnetic due to unpaired electron. It is weakly attracted towards the magnetic field. All of you know this. Correct? Mu effective if they ask you to find out the magnetic moment. Mu effective is root over of n into n plus 2 b 
BM board magnet and when n is the number of unpaired electron okay this formula is also important any of you has planning to write neat exam to me who is this me sir sushant you are planning to write neat also Yeah, just like that, sir. Good, good, good. This this question yes, in need they have asked many times in need exam. Root under n into n plus two. If you see the previous year questions, whether it is it is in chemical bonding or in transition uh, elements, this question they have asked many times. Calculate the board uh, magnetic moment. Okay. Now next, write down color formation. Color formation. color formation write down ionic and covalent compounds mm -hmm. ionic and covalent compounds of many transition elements are colored and color arises because of the because of the excitation of electrons from low energy to high energy write down next line the color of transition metal arises from transition metal ion the color of transition metal ion arises from arises arises due to write down arises due to the excitation of electrons from the excitation of electrons from lower energy orbitals to higher energy orbitals see in coordination compound also we have discussed about it color formation of coordination compound okay so if you remember what happens there there is a is a splitting of orbitals correct if you can recall this splitting of orbitals is there so electrons when you know jump from lower energy to higher energy orbitals so this has to overcome this energy difference delta e correct so the two set of orbitals which splits there is some difference in energy between the two set of orbitals so this energy difference it actually lies in the visible uh, region or range you can say so delta e we can always write at c by lambda so this and lambda falls in visible range hence what happens whenever the electron excites into the higher orbital okay it absorbs radiation from visible region whatever the difference in energy we have it absorbs from the visible region and jump into the higher energy higher orbital okay and when it jumps it shows the complementary color color okay opposite color basically basically you understood this so that energy requires write down in, in this one line the energy requires for dd transition falls in the visible range falls in the visible range 
hence for excitation it absorbs radiation from visible region absorbs radiation from visible region and shows complementary color and shows complementary color what is complementary color complementary color here we have v b g y o r oops yo this we call it as munchel v so suppose it absorbs radiation of violet color then it shows its the color you know appears will be the complementary of this violet color which is the opposite color of it that is yellow if it absorbs blue color radiation color will be orange green color will be red okay so opposite color or complementary color means the it shows the opposite color okay so this wheel we call it as munchel wheel so actually it is very difficult to you know understand logically what colors the compound shows because for that you should know the energy difference first of all if you know this delta e then you can find out lambda and suppose if you find out lambda also you should know the wavelength of these colors then you can say okay theek hai lambda is green so color shows will be red so this is very difficult to calculate that's why you have to memorize the color of various uh, you know metal ions you understood this i will give you the you know table for that what color shows of different metal ions we will give you that before that you write down one notes here one note write down the note mno4 minus mno4 minus is colored is colored in spite of d0 configuration mno4 minus is colored in spite of d0 configuration and this color is not because of dd transition this question also they have asked in the exam the question was why mno4 minus shows color since it has d0 configuration okay no electron present in d orbital mno4 minus is colored in spite of d0 configuration it is not because of d d transition but it is because of charge transfer between manganese and oxygen charge transfer between manganese and oxygen electron exchange between manganese and oxygen so there is no inner transition there is no dd transition into this but the electron exchange between manganese and oxygen because of that it shows color the same reason we have for k2cr2 or 7 also right on the same reason we have for k2cr2 or 7 similarly one more point in this you write down the second point what is the color of agcl anyone this is white what is the color of agbr agcl is white correct 
AGBR, the exact color is pale yellow. GCL, yellow. What about AGI? It is black. This four color we have. Okay. For this, all these ion you see, the configuration. Yeah, uh, no, sir, sir. AGCN is yellow, right? AGCL. So, so what are the difference in first and third? Just a second, just a second. AG2S. I have wrote it, I have written it wrong. 2S. I'm sorry, just a second. This is AG2S. Huh. Tell me what? So the third? third AGCLR. This is also, I have written it by mistake. This is AGI. AGCL, AGBR is AGI. You know. Okay. Now, in all these compounds you see, we have AG plus ion, right? And AG plus ion, what is the configuration? Can you tell me? Outermost configuration? So D10. D10. Right? So it is 4D10, 5S0, correct? It has completely filled the orbital, right? So there is no DD transition in this. Again, it is DD transition is not possible. So like MnO4 minus and K2Cr207, the color shows because of the exchange of electron between manganese and oxygen. Here, the color appears because, because of percentage ionic character. Percentage ionic character of these molecules because there is no DD transition. Okay. These two uh, examples you must remember the reason of color for these ions. Okay, no DD transition is still they shows color. The reason is person's ionic character for this, and the for first one it is the charge exchange of electrons between oxygen and manganese. Okay, now like I said, to understand logically what is the color uh, of the given ions or metal ions. Okay, it is very difficult to find out. So you have to memorize the color of various oxidation state of a given element or metal. Okay. So I'll write down here few colors. You, you should copy it down and do memorize it. I'll tell you which one is important in all this. Okay. So write down the color of different hydrated transition metal ion. Getting right down. Color of different Hydrated transition metal ion. First one is green. Green, we have Ni plus two Fe plus two, chromium plus three, and vanadium plus two. Blue, copper plus two, cobalt plus three, chromium plus two, Vanadium plus four. There are certain ions which are colorless. This is very important, colorless wala. Okay. And this logically also you can understand, except few exceptions that we have. Zn plus two, Cu plus, scandium plus three, titanium plus four. If you observe. For all these ions, there are no unpaired electron. No unpaired electrons. 
That's why it is colorless. Pink. Is. Cobalt plus two. Yellow. Is Fe plus three. Violet is Mn plus three, and the last one, purple is titanium plus three. And all this, the important one, we have. This colorless, I'll just write ions, I'll tell you. Colorless, all, all are important. Ni2 plus is important. Fe2 plus, Cr3 plus, Cr2 plus, Cu2 plus, Fe3 plus. Sir, okay. did you miss any of them by any chance? Because you have written two, three, four, four is missing. Where? Numbers are one, two, three, five. Five numbers. No, 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 I've just uh, written it wrong. One, two, three, okay, okay, it is fine. four, yeah. it is fifth, it is uh, six, it is seven. So, right. Cobalt two plus I have given you, or is pink. CO2 plus is 9, Fe3 plus is yellow. Yeah, it's correct. <clears throat> okay. These are the general properties of transition elements we have discussed. Okay. Uh, there are certain compounds. Okay. Now, the next thing we are left with certain compounds and um, their preparation and properties. Okay. There are a few tests also in this we have. But that test is, uh, I don't think it's there. Did you see the slabus, transition element slabus, J slabus? Have you seen that? This here? No? Okay, I'll, I'll just, let it be. I'll just go through it. I'll just check it. Okay, one test is there, chromite, chloride test and all, whether it is given or not. Anyways, so write down. Um, Preparation and properties of various compounds. Preparation and properties of various compounds. The first one I write down. Potassium dichromate, K2Cr2O7. Potassium dichromate. It is, in short, you write down. There are many theories in this. I'll just give you in short all those things, okay? It is an orange crystalline solid. Orange crystalline compound. Prepared by prepared by chromite ore by chromite ore chromite ore is fe cr2o4 okay now you see this reaction how it forms K2Cr2O7. 
FeCr2O4. First of all, from FeCr2O4, we'll obtain Na2Cr2O7. Na2Cr2O7. Okay, and this Na2Cr2O7 is allowed to react with potassium chloride KCl gives K2Cr2O7 plus two molecules of NaCl. Okay. Write down next thing. Two steps are involved here for the preparation of sodium dichromate, that is Na2Cr2O7. Okay. The entire reaction I won't write. But how do we get this Na2Cr2O7 two-step reaction? The chromite ore we have, which is FeCr2O4, is allowed to react with Na2CO3. I am not writing down the balanced reaction. In presence of oxygen, this reaction gives first sodium chromate. Na2CrO4. Na2CrO4 plus Fe2O3 plus carbon dioxide. This is sodium chromate. The color is yellow. It is yellow in color. Now, this sodium chromate. We used to convert into sodium dichromate. Okay, the conversion of sodium chromate into sodium dichromate is done with the help of concentrated H2SO4. So Na2CrO4 when combines with concentrated H2SO4, it gives Na2Cr2O7 plus Na2SO4 plus H2O. This is how we get sodium dichromate from chromite ore, that is FeCrO4. And then this is allowed to react with KCl, gives you K2Cr2O7. Okay, this is the that's the preparation method we have. So important point here is sodium dichromate sorry potassium dichromate is obtained from chromite ore the formula of chromite ore is FeCrO. very important this one one more thing i'll tell you about this FeCrO4. it actually exists in this form feo dot cr2o3 addition compound of this it is similar to that if you remember fe3o4 how fe3o4 exists Fe3O4 exists as FeO dot Fe2O3. Yes. Are you there? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Similarly, FeO because Fe3O4 they have asked many times in the exam the oxidation is straight enough. Okay. This they may ask. Okay. Another thing you see uh, this here uh, J means they have they are going to ask five integer type question. Correct. Okay, so five integer type questions. You must take care of this kind of questions. Like suppose uh, they can give you this question and they can ask you if the oxidation state of I is Y, what is the value of X plus Y? What is the value of X by Y? What is the value of X plus Y by two? Anything they can ask you like this in integer type. Are you getting it? 
so yeah so try to figure out where they can ask this integer type questions okay and my analysis is this year the question is going to be a bit tough tougher than the last year because logically if you think you are going to have 25 questions in each subject right so 25 into 3 75 questions you are going to have so and the time is 3 hours time is same number of question is less so obviously the level of question will increase this time that's what i feel okay so get prepare according to that okay for integer type that will only make the difference why they have done this change because last year if you see 100 percentile there were many students it's not like 100 200 they were in 1000 100 percentile to reduce this or to reduce the number of students to get the same percentile they have include this five integer type questions okay this five integer type actually decides your a percentile or rank okay so you have to take care of this integer type questions how you are performing in this test especially this five integer type questions is it going good are you able to solve how many of you are able to solve all five integer type questions in chemistry i'm talking about so we have had only like one test right yes so But in that in that test i think most of us got 3 4 maybe right yeah i don't think anyone got full i don't know but i think 3 4 was the average okay 3 4 if you are getting it it's fine okay so so keep that in mind okay integer type is very important anyways coming back to this depression method right or reaction i have given you okay reaction they won't ask don't bother about it just to keep that in mind chromite ore will prepare get to cr207 from chromite ore okay properties of this you write down properties color i have given you already it is a orange crystalline compound next you write down the yellow color of potassium chromate k2cro4 where is k2cr4 i have given you this no okay one reaction you write down here that is k2cr2o7 when you heat this k2cr2o7 if you heat this it converts into two molecules of k2cro4 two molecules of this also we are using and they'll give you oxides of chromium cr2o3 plus 3 by 2 o2 again the balanced reaction is not at all important here now this is potassium chromate this is potassium chromate now this potassium chromate when it is okay potassium chromate and this is also or it is yellow in color okay like sodium chromate potassium chromate also yellow in color okay so what we can say on heating the orange color k2cr2o7 converts into yellow color potassium chromate uh, even also k2cr2o7 in basic medium koh this again converts into k2cro4 plus h2o okay again this is yellow color and this is orange so what you have to memorize again i am telling you reaction you don't have to memorize in basic medium the color changes from orange to yellow okay of k2cr2o7 orange to yellow yellow why because potassium chromate forms okay now for this potassium chromate in acidic medium CrO4 2 minus okay write down on acidifying the yellow color of chromate potassium chromate or chromate ion on acidifying the yellow color of chromate ion changes into orange color means basically you see basic medium this reaction goes in this direction when you do this in acidic medium it again converts back into 
potassium dichromate. Okay, so reaction you write down CrO4 2 minus, which is yellow in color, in acidic medium H plus. This converts into Cr2O7 2 minus plus H2O. So in acidic medium, it again converts into orange color of dichromate solution. Okay. Now, two, three reactions they have asked in the exam. And for this, I am giving you, you have to memorize the reaction here. Like I said, here the reaction is not important. Color change is important. But here you have to memorize the reaction. So write down with HCl, with HCl, K2Cr2O7 liberates chlorine. With HCl, K2Cr2O7 liberates chlorine. Okay, reaction you write down. I'll write down the reaction here. K2, reaction is K2Cr2O7 plus 14 HCl. This gives you 2KCl plus CrCl3 plus H2O plus Cl2. So chlorine gas evolves into this. This question they have asked, which gas evolves? Answer is chlorine gas evolves into this, okay? When it reacts with HCl. Similarly, when this K2Cr2O7 reacts with Ki in acidic medium, all these reactions are in acidic medium. So reaction you write down, K2Cr2O7 plus Ki plus H2SO4, it liberates, forms K2SO4, forms Cr2SO4 whole thrice. It also forms water plus iodine gas evolves into this. This is also important, iodine gas evolves. Similarly with H2S, it oxidizes H2S to sulfur. Okay, H2S ko oxidize kar hai sulfur mein. Can you draw the structure of K2Cr2O7? Can you draw the structure of K2Cr2O7? Anyone? One second. Done. Sir, I sent a picture on WhatsApp. Chromium, two chromium atom attached with, let me check. 
टू क्रोमियम एटम एट नो गौरव द स्ट्रक्चर इज दिस Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, in this only one thing you write down, that is chromide chloride test. Test. After this, okay. Chromide chloride test. Write down when a mixture of a metal chloride and K two Cr two O seven. When a mixture of metal chloride and K two Cr two O seven. Is heated with concentrated H two S O four. When a metal of, when a mixture of metal chloride and K two Cr two O seven is heated with concentrated H two S O four. The orange vapors of. chromyl chloride chromyl chloride evolve the orange vapors of chromyl i think it is chromyl chloride not chromyl chloride chromyl chloride test myl write down okay reaction write down k2cr2o7 plus h2so4 plus nacl it gives khso4 plus nahso4 plus 2cro2cl2 plus h2 so this is this is chromyl chloride we call it as chromyl chloride okay now there are few results which is important for this when this chromyl chloride vapors passes through any oh solution means reaction of cro2 cl2 plus naoh with naoh solution it gives yellow solution of sodium chromate nhcro4 yellow solution of this plus nacl plus h2 all these are results you must remember color change yellow color of this okay na2cro4 further when it is allowed to react with lead acetate it anhydride it is sorry it forms pbcro4 plus 
CH3 COONA. So it forms a precipitate of lead chromate. It is lead chromate, yellow precipitate of it. One last reaction in this you write down. Acidified K2Cr2O7 reacts with H2O2. Acidified K2Cr2O7 reacts with H2O2. H2O2 to give a deep blue solution due to formation of deep blue solution due to formation of CrO5 oxides of chromium. This oxides of chromium, we know the structure of this. It is highly unstable and hence in this acidic medium itself, it reacts and converts into converts into sulfate 2 Cr2 SO4 whole thrice plus 6 H2O plus 7. Okay, reaction is not that important. A structure of CrO4. We have already discussed, if you remember last year in redox reaction, it has butterfly structure, if butterfly. you remember this. Yes? Yes, sir. What is the oxidation state of chromium here? Can you tell me the oxidation state of chromium? Is it plus one second. Plus six, right? Yeah. Yes, it is plus six, very good plus six okay so we'll take a break and then we'll start after break two three four compounds more we have to do preparation and properties and we'll finish this okay we'll start at 4 10 correct okay sir yeah
सो वेन इज ब्रेक टिल फोर टेन टिल फोर टेन
is break over hello hello can we start yeah Sir. Yes. Sir. Okay. So write down the second compound that is potassium permanganate. KmNO4. KMnO4, write down. It is prepared by pyrolusite mineral. Sorry, pyrolusite ore, not mineral. It is prepared by pyrolusite ore. What is the formula of pyrolusite? is manganese dioxide mno2 okay reaction is 2 mno2 plus koh plus o2 this gives you first it forms 2k2 mno4 plus H2O. K2MnO4 is potassium magnet. We call it as potassium magnet. Okay. See, one thing you must know of manganese compound when reacts with an oxidizing agent, like here, this oxygen is atmospheric oxygen and oxidizing agent. Okay. So manganese compound when reacts with an oxidizing agent, it usually converts into plus six oxidation state. Okay. Plus six oxidation state. So further what happens, this K2MnO4 is treated with, this is treated with either chlorine or ozone or CO2. And it converts magnet into permagnet. Okay. So the reaction is 2K2MnO4. When treated with chlorine, it is also an oxidizing agent. So this converts into 2KMnO4 plus KCl. Similarly, when it is heated with plus H2O plus O3, again an oxidizing agent, it converts into 2KMnO4 plus KOH. O2. 3K2 MnO4 plus CO2, it gives 2K MnO4 plus MnO2 plus 2K2 CO3. Can you tell me the oxidation state of manganese in K2 MnO4? Plus 6. Plus in K2 MnO4? 6. Plus 6. Right? So all these oxidizing agent 
converts K K two M N O four into K M N O four. That is potassium permanganate. Okay. Next thing. This is. One note you write down. In acidic medium. In acidic medium, dichromate is stable, and in basic medium, chromate is stable. Okay, in acidic medium, dichromate is stable, but in basic medium, chromate is stable. Okay, if you can remember with this A B C D. Okay, and it is go. It goes like acidic may dichromate, and basic may chromate. Okay, A B C D in acidic medium dichromate is more stable than chromate, and in basic medium chromate is more stable than dichromate. That's what it means. Okay, some properties of this you write down. It is a purple color, purple colored crystalline compound. purple color crystalline compound converts converts this reactions are important converts ferrous salt ferrous salt what is the oxidation state fe2+ plus. plus ferrous salt into ferric salt it converts ferric into ferrous into ferric salt fe3+ plus. okay this all Iodine to iodate, right? Iodine from iodide, Ki. Okay, sulfur also H2S oxidizes into sulfur. Copy on this. Right on quickly. We'll finish this. Can you draw the structure of four minus? Sir, what? A structure of MnO four minus or KmnO four? So one second. What's that sound? Done. Sir, is it uh, three oxygen atoms attached to Mn, uh, two double bonded and one is a single bond? No, two double bond oxygen, two single, two single bond oxygen. Yeah. Two sir. single bond oxygen. Is it two single bond oxygen? Just a second. It is KmNO4 minus, no? Uh, sir, MnO4 two minus, right? So it's three, only one single bond oxygen. Ha, right? I think it should one be this correct. M double bond O, double bond O, double bond O and O minus. This is the structure. Okay. This is sp3 hybridized magnesium. Sp3 hybridized. Okay. It also eliminates nitrogen. N2 evolves from hydrazine. From NH2, NH2. Generally, they ask which gas evolves. Okay, 
oxalic acid if you have from that it evolves co2 from oxalic acid oxalic acid these two three reactions are important write down one uh, important point in this mno4 2 minus mno4 2 minus this is important this is an information actually okay mno4 2 minus this one mno4 2 minus in dilute alkaline in dilute alkaline comma water and acidic solution and acidic solution is unstable is unstable and disproportionates and disproportionates to give disproportionates to give mno4 minus and mno2 this reaction is important okay this question they may ask you in redox reaction uh, chapter also mno4 2 minus acidic medium suppose i am taking 4h plus it converts into mno4 minus plus mno2 plus h2o so this proportionation takes place and it converts into mno4 minus and mno2 okay this is it for potassium permanganate okay next to write down ferrous sulfate ferrous sulfate ferrous sulfate ferrous sulfate we also call it as green vitriol green vitriol and it is also known as harakasis h a r a k a s i s i'll write down again it's not clear all are same thing green vitriol harakasis ferrous sulfate h a r a k a s i s harakasis okay it is formed by the oxidation of iron pyrite oxidation of iron pyrite what is the formula of iron pyrite s2 f e s2 iron pyrite reaction is 2 f e s2 plus o2 plus h2o gives 2 fe so4 plus 2 h2so4 this is the reaction right anhydrous form of ferrous sulfate which is fe so4 anhydrous form is colorless fe so4 okay there are few reactions i'll write down this way you also copy it down same way we can finish it quickly then feso4 we have and when it reacts with kcn kcn k2so4 goes out and it forms k4 fecn6 minus of k2so4 on exposure of h2 plus o2 h2o plus o2 it forms brownish yellow solution of 
एफ ई ओ एच हाइड्रोक्सी सल्फेट इट इज द ब्राउनिश येलो सोल्यूशन ऑन हाइड्रोलिसिस ऑन हाइड्रोलिसिस इट गिव्स एफ ई ओ एच होल ट्वाइस प्लस एच टू एस ओ फोर okay this is the reactions of feso4 there are other methods of preparation also i write down this side the preparation method one reaction we have already seen the another reaction you see iron if you take fe and it reacts with h2so4 hydrogen gas evolves in this reaction and it forms feso4 another one if you take sorry if you take feco3 on reaction with h2so4 again h2o and co2 goes out in this reaction forms feso4 now iron sulfide fes which is black in color black color of fes reacts with again h2so4 dilute gives you feso4 okay so reactions of feso4 is not that important okay from how it forms iron pyrite that you must keep in mind common ring you must remember the most important reaction of feso4 can i go to the next page one minute so one second yeah copy it down yes sir okay the most important reaction of feso4 is the heating effect of it okay and we'll take hydrated compounds here yeah, so write down the heading one second can you go back to the previous page yeah sure this is okay yes sir okay now heating effect you write down see the hydrated form of feso4 they have asked this question many times so this reaction heating effect is very very important okay feso4.7 h2o when you heat this as 140 degree celsius even the temperature here also important six molecules of h2o goes out and it forms feso4.h2o further if you heat it at 300 degree celsius anhydrous feso4 forms anhydrous feso4 forms and further when you heat this at high temperature higher than 300 degree celsius 500 600 like that it dissociates and it forms fe2o3 plus sulfur dioxide gas forms and sulfur trioxide also forms okay the color of this fe2o3 is reddish brown okay the uses of feso4 it is used for the making of blue black ink blue black ink okay it is also used in pentons reagent if you remember pentons reagent that is feso4 plus or with hydrogen peroxide h2o2 for preparation of more salt also we use this more salt reaction is feso4 plus NH42SO4 plus 6H2O gives FeSO4 dot NH4 SO4 
dot six H two. This is more salt. Done. So this heating effect, these reactions are very very important. Okay, must remember that. Even temperature also you must keep in mind. Next, write down copper sulfate. Can we go a bit faster? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, no so you write a bit fast now. There are many things left. Copper sulfate blue vitriol. The formula is CuSO4 dot five H two. Right, blue vitriol. We also call it as Nila Thotha. Have you heard this name? Nila who? No sir. <laughs> Nila Thotha. Never heard sir. Never ever heard. Sir, Ravi has a good story about copper sulfate sir. What? He got suspended. I mean. Who? Sir, I bought copper sulfate in seventh grade. There was this idiot in our class who ate it, thinking it was candy, and because of that, I got suspended. When? Eighth or seventh or eighth. He had a oh. surgery. He had a minor surgery, right? Nothing, dude. He just he just puked and he came back some bullshit. He was today. Okay, chalo, come here. Okay. For ingesting copper. <laughs> See, uh, this um, it is a blue crystalline compound. Blue crystalline compound. Next line, you write down. In this, four H two O molecules are ligands. Four H two O molecules are ligands. While the fifth water molecule is hydrogen bonded with the sulfate ion. The sulfate ion SO four two minus. Okay, so you see one thing: four water molecules are ligand. Okay, so four H two O molecules are bonded with what? Coordinate bond. Correct. Coordinate bond, and the fifth one, the fifth one is bonded with hydrogen bonding with SO four two minus ion. So here also you see if they give you this question like X. Water molecules are bonded with coordinate bond, and Y water molecules bonded with hydrogen bond. Then what is the value of X plus Y? They can ask you this question in integer type. Got it? So you have to memorize this. Okay. Reaction you see here. How do we prepare CuSO4? There are three, four reactions, and for this, this again, uh, these reactions are not that impo important. In this, also we have heating effect. That is the most important reaction. I'll just write down the preparation method of CuSO4, and it is uh, copper when heated with H2SO4. It gives you CuSO4 in presence of oxygen gas. Water molecule goes out. It gives you CuSO4. Okay. The second reaction we have CuO. CuO again reacts with H2SO4. Again, H2O goes out and it converts into CuSO4. Okay, hydroxide of copper, CuOH hold twice. All these reaction you see takes place with H2SO4. Okay, so in this also H2O molecules goes out. You'll get CuSO4. Okay, so like this we prepare CuSO4 copper sulfate. The reactions of copper sulfate we have. Two three reactions here. When it is heated with NaOH, hold twice. 
okay when it is heated with naoh not hold twice naoh or we can also take na2co3 it forms the major product the most important product here will write cu oh hold twice it's not ca it's cu oh hold twice and the color of this is blue cu oh hold twice blue color of it okay when it is heated with zn or fe it gives you copper metal cu solid znso4 or feso4 goes out when it is heated with ki so2 with h2o it converts into iodide cui okay heating effect of cuso4 next page cu i2 e right on this question cu i2 this question they have, i'm sorry okay this question they have asked in j this whole question cu i2 j 2012 most probably cu i2 cu2 plus ion see all these and i'll tell you one thing i minus in this write down i minus ion or you take uh, cl minus or you take uh, scn minus scn minus all these ion converts cu2 plus to cu plus this particular question they have asked in je means okay heating effect you write down the hydrous salt of this cuso4.5 h2 when it is heated in presence of air cuso4 means normal temperature 4 h2o it forms at 100 degree celsius 3 h2o molecules goes out CuSO4 dot H2O we get. Further, if you increase the temperature to 250 degrees Celsius, it forms anhydrous form of copper sulfate, and at 750, it dissociates and converts into oxide plus SO2 and O3. All these temperature-based reactions important. Okay, so green, blue, vitriol. We have so when it now, forms dot four H two, the one the water attached with hydrogen bonding leaves, right? Or do uh, we know which one leaves? You no, that we that we cannot say any one of the water molecule we have. Okay. And uh, obviously, the water, the first water molecule that goes out, that you can say it is the one which is attached with the hydrogen bonding that goes okay. out. Okay. Yes. Okay. Chances are high, like that we can say. understood so next you write down zinc sulfate zinc sulfate we also call it as white vitriol and for all these guys ncert you must go through okay they won't ask anything beyond ncert okay line by line you have to study white vitriol the formula of this is zn so4 
dot seven H two O. Okay, it is a colorless crystalline compound. Colorless crystalline compound. Soluble in water. Isomorphous. You know what is isomorphism? Soluble in water. And it is isomorphous with. Write down. So all this is CRT, sir. Ah. Huh? All this is there in NCRT. No, I am giving you some extra uh, thing also into this. But for exam point of view, NCRT at least you must finish line by line. Okay. Further, if you have time, you can go through any other book. Okay. Yes. But I am not considering. I am not only focusing on NCRT thing. Okay. I am just giving you the other details also. But for preparation purpose, at least NCRT you must finish properly. If you have time, then you can go through the other book also. Okay. Yes. Isomorphous with epsom salt. This question also they have asked once. Epsom salt. Okay. Isomorphism means the formula representation is same. Like MgSO4 dot 7H2. It looks similar, right? ZnSO4 dot 7H2O. MgSO4 dot 7H2O. This kind of compounds are called as isomorphous compounds. Okay. Formula representation is identical. Or so KCl, NaCl, and all those. So you can say isomorphous. Yes. So you see the reaction of ZnSO4 preparation method and reaction of ZnSO4. The first one, what we can do? Zn plus H2SO4 minus H2. It gives you ZnSO4. We can also take all these are similar reaction. You see there we take copper oxide. Here we have ZnO plus H2SO4. Again, H2O goes out, forms ZnSO4. Carbonate also we can take for this reaction. ZnCO3 plus H2SO4. Okay. In this H2 and CO2 goes out. H2 and CO2 forms ZnSO4. Okay, the first reaction of this is very important here. NaOH, the reaction with NaOH, in this it forms hydroxide ZnOH whole twice, which is white precipitate it forms, which further when it dissolves in NaOH, H2O goes out, and it converts into Na2ZnO2. This is a soluble complex, complex sodium zincate. Soluble complex sodium zincate. Okay, here we have Na2SO4 goes out. Reaction with NaHCO3. H2O molecules and CO2 molecules goes out and it forms ZnCO3 plus Na2SO4. Now the heating effect of this ZnSO4 dot 6H2O okay uh, 7H2O 7H2O when you heat this at 100 degrees Celsius, one water molecule goes out, ZnSO4 dot 6 H2O it forms. Further, you heat this at 200 degrees Celsius, it forms anhydrous form of ZnSO4. And on 800 degrees Celsius, it eliminates sulfur trioxide, forms ZnO plus SO3. Done? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Now, the last thing we'll discuss is uh, photography. 
So are we going to finish the chapter today? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll finish this. Okay. There's nothing in F block. Huh? There's nothing. F block. Me will have just two, three properties like general, general electronic configuration and all. There's no compounds into that. Just two, three properties. General electronic configuration we have. Lanthanide. What is the first element? Last element? Actinides. How many elements are there? Some general electronic configuration and that is it. Nothing much. Okay. So um. Right on next photography. Photography, we also they have asked questions. What is photography? It is an art of obtaining the exact impression impression of an object of an object through a chemical reaction. Through a chemical reaction initiated by what? Initiated by light. So all these are photochemical reactions initiated by light. Okay. Now the first thing is for photography. The first thing is the preparation of photographic plate. Okay, so in this you write down the copy the same way. Okay, preparation of of photographic plate. Photographic plate. Photographic plate is generally obtained by uh, generally made up of silver halide. Okay, so based on it is actually made up of AgX silver halide, or we'll write on based on based on the nature of Just a second, guys. Okay, based on the nature of AGX. You see, in silver halide, this question they ask. Okay, here they ask the question. And the question is what we don't use here for photographic plate, we don't use silver fluoride except AGF. Because AGF is what? AGF is not photosensitive. Okay, so we use only silver halide, which is photosensitive. Photosensitive. So here this they have asked this question that which silver halide we do not use for the preparation of photographic plate answer is AGF because it is not photosensitive. Okay, so what we do here this reaction we use to carry out for the preparation of silver halide NH4 Br plus AgNO3 and it gives AgBr plus NH4 NO3. Right, this is will get will take an emulsion of it okay and that is applied on the celluloid film you must have seen that uh, uh, wo, so kya bolte hai? that uh, this uh, real uh, no we are not talking about digital camera that real and all we used to 
clean it. No movie when they took we used to put that into the uh, solution and we'll you know when you uh, shake it, you'll get the clear picture of that. Yeah, dark room. Also. So yeah, negatives. Yeah, 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 room negatives. So we are talking about that. It's not about digital camera and all. वो बात नहीं कर रहे हैं. So this is AGBR emulsion of this. Emulsion of this will take an emulsion of this, and that emulsion will applied on applied on the celluloid film. That negative we call it as no negative. So this, since it is applied on the celluloid film, so this can be activated by the uh, exposure of light. Okay, when light strikes on it. The reaction takes place; it gets activated, right? That's why we say, art of obtaining the exact impression of an object through a chemical reaction initiated by light. Okay. Now, when you get this, when you have this photographic plate, when it is done, then what happens? The exposure of photographic plate, exposure of photographic plate with the light. Okay. so light what happens when it strikes onto this celluloid film light it reduces light right down light reduces agbr reduces agbr and effect of light is directly proportional to its intensity okay more intensity more will be the effect so this agbr reduces into ag plus br2 it reduces okay now the next step is developing only two three things we have that you have to memorize here in this photographic photography that usually they ask okay first one i told you already developing okay so this developing of the image is carried out in dark carried out in dark okay now in this in this step what happens the exposed photographic plate okay the exposed photographic plate exposed photographic plate is allowed to react with a uh, exposed photographic plate is treated with a reducing agent treated with a reducing agent and hence these reducing agent we also call it as developers okay developers the examples of developers sometimes they ask this question also which of these reducing agent developers we use the first example you write down here potassium ferrous oxalate potassium ferrous oxalate what is the formula of potassium ferrous oxalate what is oxalic acid coh twice So H you remove both hydrogen you remove put A and F you over there. Correct? Yes, sir. Okay, this is one example of developers. Another one, one more you write down. Alkaline solution of pyrogalol and quinol or quinol, not and. Alkaline solution of pyrogalol or quinol we use for the developing. of this photographic plate now in this what happens the developed film that you get okay here you write down the developed film which is nothing but negative okay just a second developed film is negative okay why we call it as negative because in this process what happens the object actually reversed okay so the bright part or bright becomes dark or dark becomes bright 
okay that's why it is negative so developed fill is nothing but negative okay uh, so now give me another example other than potassium oxalate for uh, developers what Did you give any other example for developers other than potassium? Yeah, oxalate? alkaline solution of pyrogalol, alkaline solution of pyrogalol or quinol. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. Now, did you finish till here? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, after this, after developing, the next step is fixing. fixing now in this what we do there are some unused agbr silver bromide so we have to remove that so fixing means removal of removal of unused agbr okay and for this we use this is important here and for this we use sodium thiosulfate solution sodium thiosulfate so they have asked this question also what we use to remove agbr okay sodium thiosulfate solution unused agbr that is na2s2o3 okay so the reaction of agbr plus na2s2o3 let me tell you this these reactions are not important i'm just giving you you need to memorize this okay it forms a complex na3 ags2o3 whole twice plus nabr okay this is fixing this also carries out in dark okay carried out in dark now after fixing we have printing okay so photo is almost done now we have to print it okay so for printing we use what ha huh? printing ke liye printing paper chahiye na we need printing paper so printing paper is what it is generally bromide paper we use silver bromide also we use for this purpose bromide paper we use for this purpose okay now in this the whole process is repeated again okay the whole process is repeated and the image obtained here is black and white the image obtained here is black and white we get black and white image okay and the last step when you get this black and white image then you have to put some color into this for that it is toning okay now for toning the printed image the printed image dipped in a solution dipped in a solution containing the salt of gold or platinum or selenium okay any one of these salts okay so this is the last step of photography okay so what is the important thing here for printed solution dipped in a solution of salt of gold platinum and uh, selenium okay so this is important okay uh, what we use here to remove agbr sodium thiosulfate this is also important okay image carried out in dark and that image is black and white 
okay printing paper you use is bromide paper this is also important reaction you let it be you can skip reaction and for developing carried out in dark we use a reducing agent called developers i have given you two names of uh, two examples of developers and that is sodium potassium sorry potassium ferrous oxalate and alkaline solution of paragalol and quinol okay that is important emulsion is applied on celluloid film okay emulsion of agbr applied on celluloid film and the the very important thing is this one they have asked this question many times we don't use agf because it is insensitive towards light understood this yes sir okay so this is it for this chapter okay f block just uh, two three property we have it is given in the book like uh, electronic configuration general electronic configuration you go through actinides starts from which element goes up to which element okay how many members are there members of 60 series and all lanthanide series and actinide series we have okay lanthanum and uh, the starts from 4f orbital fills into that okay one in, in this uh, promethium is a artificial radioactive element p r o m e t h i u m promethium mm -hmm. is an artificial radioactive element yes sir okay so this is it for this chapter okay ncrt like i said said you must finish ncrt properly then if you want to study all these things you can go through any other book okay op tendon op agrawal whatever you have you can go through much okay so next class today we could not start uh, aromatic chemistry we'll do it next class two more class i'll take to finish maximum two more class i'll take to finish aromatic chemistry the entire but then you need sir saturday class. saturday you'll be taking a class no sir a saturday definitely i'll take i don't think we'll have any class between before saturday because i have other classes and we don't have holiday also these days right yeah do you have any holiday in the so friday is a holiday friday is a holiday yeah. yes sir take friday for friday what? friday sir uh, that rajotsav 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 acha theek hai theek hai so friday i'll let you know so friday thursday. saturday you can take Wait. yeah yeah mostly uh, most probably i'll take on friday okay but i'll let you know on thursday yes sir okay yes sir theek hai chalo thank you thank you sir yeah thank you sir thank you sir thank you sir so hara question um so thank you sir hara question Yes, tell me. Uh, yeah, uh, in the color of uh, compounds in DD uh, transitions, is uh -huh. the color because of the uh, one second? Is the color because of the uh, emissions that it uh, emitted light after uh, uh, absorption, or is it reflection after absorption? It reflection. Okay, so it doesn't re-emit light, right? It actually, you know, it actually what happens uh, when the electron jumps to the higher energy state. Okay, so it absorbs mm -hmm. some energy. Okay, right. so that energy will have some uh, that radiation will have some wavelength. Correct. Yeah. So usually, what we say that when when electron comes, uh, you know, to the original state, when the electron comes down to the lower energy state, it radiates. Uh, uh like emission right it radiates different frequency okay. of uh, or wavelength of light which is there of the complementary nature of the wheel that i have given you okay right. so the color right. is there because of the radiation that you know radiates from the uh, transition of electrons the okay, one so, it absorbs so both are absorbed currently that is gone hmm? hmm no it's not what's reflected after absorption right yes 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 because of reflected got it no so um, is it like uh, let's say the electron yes. is the electron is energized right so it uh, jumps to higher state so the light that isn't absorbed by the electron is that what gives the color or is it what the electron releases while uh, being deenergized yes 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 the the electron when it comes down to the lower energy level it radiates some light some radiation comes out Okay. Okay. So we'll get yeah. color corresponding to that radiation. Right. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Okay. And usually it is of the complementary nature. That's why I said that yeah. it if it absorbs green color light wavelength, hmm. then the uh, color will be what the observed color will be red. The right. complementary of red. 
ओके ओके या या थैंक यू ओके चलो थैंक यू बाय बाय